This is the Fujifilm GFX 100S, and what makes this camera so interesting is that it houses a cropped medium format high resolution sensor that's capable of capturing images at 16 bit color. And that is absolutely awesome. Not to mention the fact that Fuji has miniaturized the medium format technology so you're not carrying around a suitcase with a camera in it anymore. These cameras are now reminiscent of the size of modern mirrorless cameras. And another really cool thing about this camera is the fact that it has an incredible IBIS system allowing you to shoot medium format handheld, which is, which is really cool. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you my first impressions of the 100S from the perspective of a lifelong Canon shooter. I'm a professional photographer, been shooting for 19 years, and I've predominantly been using Canon from that time. I have dabbled with Nikon, Sony, Lumix. I've rented medium formats for gigs before, but I've never actually owned one. So this is gonna be very exciting for me. So if you're interested in investing in the GFX system and you're not sure if you wanna do that or not, hopefully this video helps you out, gives you some interesting insights from somebody who's been shooting another system this whole time. All right, before we get started, I just wanna say Fuji has done an incredible job in the medium format space. Now, if you think about it, back in the day, if you wanted to get into medium format photography, you wanted to buy a camera, a basic camera and a lens could cost you $20,000 plus. And if you wanted a higher resolution back and more lenses and build out your kit, it could cost you $50,000 plus easily. So Fuji has done an incredible job. I think this camera cost around 6,000 USD when it was first announced, which is amazing, which is amazing. Not to mention that, but Fuji has miniaturized the technology. So it's, it's hand holdable. Those old medium format cameras, the H1s and so on and so forth, those were big cameras and you need to shoot them in a studio space. But now you can literally take medium format out for a walk and shoot pictures wherever you want. And uh, that is awesome. So kudos to Fuji for really innovating in the medium format space. All right, so let's talk about some of the features on the 100S. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the features and all the specs of this camera. This camera's been out long enough. There's plenty of videos on YouTube already talking about that stuff. But what I do wanna talk about is the features in this camera that influenced my purchasing decision. So I just wanna talk about the things that really excite me about this camera. So we're gonna talk about those features right now. So the first feature I wanna talk about obviously is the feature that defines this camera and that's the sensor. Now, first thing I wanna mention is that this is not a true medium format sensor. A true medium format sensor is, what is it? Six by 4.5 and this is a slightly smaller sensor. So it's like a APS-C medium format sensor, a crop medium format. So it's not true medium format, it's slightly smaller, but still it's 68% bigger than full frame. And with that bigness, you get some benefits. Number one is low light performance. So because it's a bigger sensor, bigger lenses, more light, you can uh, shoot in lower light at lower ISOs, get cleaner images, which is awesome. The other benefit is that the ratio from like sensor size to lens, focal point, circles of confusion, all those calculations, the bokeh you can get with medium format is a lot better or even crop medium format. So the bigger the sensor, the shallower the depth of field is naturally. So even with this lens here, and this is a 45 to 100 F4, at F4 you can get some really, really nice bokeh probably something close to f2 on a full frame we're going to test out these lenses against um we're going to do the the i don't know 20 to 70 f2 versus the 45 to 100 and we're going to test it out and do a little bokeh test and stuff in a future video so if you want to see that definitely subscribe and on the lens you can see here i have a little piece of tape it says 36 to 79 because this says 45 to 100 which is the millimeter length of the lens but in full frame equivalent this is a 36 to 79 so it's pretty close to a 28 to 70 and uh, yeah, so anyway, at F4, you can still get pretty good bokeh on medium format, which is awesome. Now the other benefit to a larger sensor is higher resolution. The bigger the sensor, the more resolution you get. A lot of people will say, oh no, it's all about the amount of pixels you get per inch. And it's not really, it's, it's pixels per inch times surface area. So I mean, these are, there's people out there who make an argument that an APS-C sensor because it has more pixels per inch then a full frame sensor is higher resolution, but it's not, it's pixels per inch times surface area. And this is a pretty big surface area and the amount of detail it can pick up is absolutely phenomenal. And another feature that totally excited me about this camera is the fact that you have the option to shoot between 14 and 16 bit raw files. So 16 bit, which is crazy, that's, that's pretty high. So hopefully that translates into the ability to bring back highlights and shadows and capture more detail in parts of the image that might be out over or underexposed. 
And hopefully that gives me a lot more latitude when editing and pushing colors in, in Lightroom presets and you know post editing and all that kind of stuff. Now, the R5 can shoot 14-bit RAW when you're shooting in mechanical shutter and drops to 12-bit when you're shooting electronic. So they both can shoot 14-bit. It would be interesting to make a video in the future comparing the RAW files from both cameras and then comparing 16 to 14 to see if 16 actually makes a difference. A lot of YouTube reviewers say that visually you really can't tell the difference between 14 and 16 when you look at it on a monitor, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the, the dynamic range, the latitude, how far can you push those images with 16 bits of information. And so I'm expecting the dynamic range on this camera to be absolutely phenomenal. All right, so another feature that gets me really excited about this camera is the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization. Now, back in the day, if you wanted to shoot medium format, you had to lock it off on a tripod or monopod or something because any little bit of shake goes a long way to making a blurry image because the sensor moves and the, the readout speed and all that stuff. So it really was detrimental to medium format cameras. But with six stops of IBIS, now that's six stops with the camera's IBIS plus the OIS in the lens combined gives you six stops of stabe which is great and that allows you to shoot handheld with a medium format camera. And back in the day that would have been completely unheard of, but now you can do it. You can take this camera for a walk, you can shoot some street photography, provided your subjects aren't moving too fast because this isn't an action and sports camera. We'll talk about that in the cons. All right, so now I wanna talk about the, the, the second most important feature for me on this camera and that is the film simulations. And I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. My first camera in the Fuji ecosystem was the Fuji X100V and I bought this back in 2020 and it was just kind of like an everyday carry camera, something to do, keep me busy during the, you know, the global situation and stuff. And I thought, as a lot of other people probably think, is that the film simulations are just gimmicks. They're useless. I can edit in Lightroom or capture one after or Photoshop, whatever. I can just apply my own effects to the images. And yes, you can, but the film simulations in Fuji's cameras are so good, like they look so good, you can literally shoot JPEG and give your clients the photos right after. Like you can, I, I've done photo shoots, I've done projects, I've even shot a wedding with this camera and I shoot everything with one of the Fuji film simulations in large JPEG after the event, after the, the shoot, the gig, whatever, I go to my laptop, I offload the, the, the images onto a card or I upload them to Google Drive and I send them to the clients and after the photo shoot, the project is done. I go, I shoot the photos, I give the client the photos and I walk away. I don't have to go back to my computer, back to the office, offload the photos, edit the photos, adjust this, adjust that and blah, blah, blah. And then two, three hours later, I'm done and then I can send the photos to the client. Usually after the gig, you're tired, you're done. You're like, <laughs> I wanna put my feet up. And that's the thing. But the X100V, obviously a little APS-C sensor, fixed camera, um, uh, fixed lens, it has its limitations. But with the 100S, I'm looking forward to shooting film simulations, JPEGs, high resolution, medium format quality for clients, depending on the client and all that. Obviously you discuss it beforehand. You don't just give clients JPEGs right out of camera, but for certain projects, I'm gonna be able to shoot them with this camera, produce super high quality images, and then just offload the JPEGs and give them to the client right after the shoot and walk away. I don't have to spend hours processing the shot. So, for me, the film simulations are absolutely amazing. And please, Canon, give us the ability to upload LUTs <laughs> into the cameras. Like that would be great if we could put like presets into the cameras. And like on a side note with the film simulations, the cool thing with Fuji is like, there's this whole subculture. There's even websites dedicated to different film recipes in the cameras because you can adjust the film recipes. You can adjust the colors and tones and tweaks and you can you can adjust the curves in camera. You can adjust the S curve to give you more contrast, less contrast. You can, you can adjust film grain, all sorts of things. So you can pretty much create your own film recipes with these Fuji cameras. This whole community is dedicated to sharing these recipes. You can pop it into your camera and you can get completely cool shots <laughs> right out of your camera without having to edit anything in Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One or anything like that. So the film simulations, I know I'm, I'm hyping them up here, but as a longtime Canon user, the ability to use film simulations in my workflow and create beautiful shots with minimal editing post work, absolutely a game changer. And it saves me so much time 
And in this business, time is money. The faster you can turn over your projects, the faster you can move on to other things, especially in my situation since I'm making YouTube videos and working as a full-time photographer. So, photographer. So there's no time for anything really. So yeah, huge time saver, money saver. Love the film simulations. All right, so let's talk about ports here. You don't get anything too fancy. There's just five ports on this camera. You get a mic jack, you get a headphone jack, you get a USB-C port for data transfer, and you can also charge the battery through that port. And you get a micro HDMI port for outputting video into an external recorder and you get a PC sync cable and that is it. And if you're the type of person who likes to shoot with a battery grip, there is no battery grip for the 100S. And um, in terms of the ergonomics, the feel, it feels big and clunky, very much like the old 5D series of cameras. So I feel right at home. I've used those cameras for over 10 years. It's a nice big grip, very comfortable in the hands. There's a little nub here on the Q button. The Q button, if you're not familiar with it, is just like a quick menu. So it'll open up like a menu on the screen so you can quickly access certain points. But it's got this little ridge here and you can tuck your thumb into that and it just makes this camera, it's heavy, but it's super stable in the hands. You can hold it nice and tight. And the only thing I don't like is, I don't know why camera companies keep doing this. These jingly cable attachments. If it's supposed to shoot video, you don't want this making noise. And also when you're shooting photos, like you sound like you're wearing bells or something. It's just too noisy. So not a big fan of that. And uh, with that being said, let's move into the cons of this camera. So second con, the EVF is 3.69 million dots. I have deep set eyes, so I like to remove this, this cover here so I can actually see the whole screen. Now Canon has a really interesting feature in their cameras. Maybe Fuji has it, I don't know. I have to go through the, the menu. So if it does have it, I apologize. But you can actually shrink the size of the screen inside of the EVF. So if you can't see the whole screen because you can't get your eyeball close enough, you can actually shrink the size of the screen in the screen so you can see all the information. So yeah, 3.69 million dots. I, it's a medium format camera. The price tag is pretty high. I just don't think that resolution is good enough and the magnification could be better as well. I know they have an X100 and now an X102 and the, the EVFs are a lot better in those cameras and they're more expensive. But I think at this price point, you should really expect a better EVF. Two, and this is me being a Canon shooter and being spoiled by Canon. Canon has this great feature. Like right now, this camera is off. And if I were to take off the lens, you can see that the shutter is down. The shutter comes down to protect the sensor from dust. So when you're changing your lenses in dusty situations, dust isn't gonna come onto your sensor. In fact, I've changed, I've cleaned the sensor once since I got this camera in 2020. So I've had it a long time and the sensor doesn't get dirty because that shutter comes down. Now, with these cameras, the sensor is constantly exposed and that's a big sensor to have exposed. And I don't know, I wish there was a way, maybe in firmware Fuji you can do this where you can when you turn off the camera, the shutter comes down and just protects the sensor from dust. That would be amazing because I know I'm probably gonna end up cleaning this sensor a lot because it's gonna attract a lot of dust. All right, so one really cool thing with this camera is you have like a selector on the outside of the camera for manual focus, continuous autofocus, and single shot. Now, I just wanna talk about the autofocus, the continuous autofocus. So here we have the R5, obviously autofocus on this blazing fast, eye tracking, super fast, super sticky. You could always count on this to be like spot on with, with eye tracking and, and animal tracking or whatever the case may be tracking. The autofocus is absolutely fantastic. The Fuji GFX 100S will leave you wanting more. The X100V autofocus is absolutely terrible. In continuous autofocus, this is like 1995 standards. It's really bad. This is better. The X100V is definite, or the 100S is definitely better in terms of autofocus and capability. Now, there's one thing I wanna mention here is that full frame, medium format, a lot more pixels, technology is different here. So it's not really right of me to judge a 100S based on full frame autofocus. They're completely different beasts. So I just wanna mention that if there's anyone out there who's thinking about going to full frame or media, going to medium format and expecting the autofocus you get on full frame, it's not gonna happen. It just isn't the case. So. If you're shooting sports or actions and things like that, you're gonna have to find workarounds with the 100S, maybe like 
figure out your, your depth of field width for your subject to get into the depth of field and then take the shot. Little tricks like that you can do, like the old school focusing tricks. But I will say this, in terms of the medium format world, if we look at other medium format cameras, the 100S has incredible autofocus relative to other cameras. It beats the Hasabloods, it beats the, uh, the Leicas. It just, it's awesome autofocus for medium format. Unfortunately, it's not as good as, as full frame, but in the, in the medium format world, the autofocus here is considered amazing. All right, so if you're like me, you're totally curious. Here we have an R5, and eventually I'm gonna pre-order the R5 Mark II because I love these Canon cameras. And we have the high resolution 28 to 70 lens on here. How does this Canon camera and the future R5 Mark II stack up against the S100 medium format or crop medium format sensor with a medium format lens? I'm so curious. I wanna know how, I know obviously medium format should win in terms of resolution, but how close can they get? How good is the full frame sensor technology getting? So if this is something you wanna to know too, definitely subscribe to the channel because we will be comparing these two cameras and putting them up against each other in photo shoots and lighting tests and all that kind of fun stuff because I'm so curious to see what the real difference is between medium format and full frame. So if that's what you're into, definitely subscribe. All right, testing, testing, one, two, three, mic check, mic check, everything sounds good, no clipping. All right, so we are now recording with the 100S and this is the first video I'm making with this camera, so we're gonna test it out. Now, I've researched this camera and I've looked at video shot with this camera and it looks incredibly cinematic. I know this is a photography first camera and it's not really designed to be a video camera, but you get that beautiful medium format look with all the rich detail and all the, the fine little details and everything looks so lifelike and real and it's just, it's beautiful. And so this might be a sleeper video camera because it's not really designed or promoted as a video camera, but the image quality is absolutely amazing. All right, so now we're looking at uh, the back of the screen here recorded on a Ninja V and uh, you can see it's tracking my face pretty good. It's not super sticky like you see on Canon and Sony cameras, but uh, you can definitely kind of trick it a little bit. But it does a pretty good job of locking, locking onto the eye and it's certainly doing a lot better than my X100V did, which is, I don't know, not really a video camera either. But uh, yeah, impressed with the eye tracking. Now there's one thing I did notice in my research for this camera is that when you're filming talking head stuff, the camera locks on, it's pretty good, no problems. But if you start moving left to right fast, the footage gets a little choppy. So I don't know if, if it was those people making those videos who just mixed up the frame rates and created chop because they didn't know what they were doing, or if it's actually the camera's readout speed because you're dealing with a large sensor and it has to read out all that information at 24 frames a second, which is what we're filming at here, 23.9. So I'm gonna quickly go left to right and let's see if we can do it without losing the eye focus. Now, am I starting to chop as I move left to right because the sensor is just reading too slowly, or is it those other people who made those other videos just didn't know what they were doing and mixed frame rates and everything looked choppy. So we'll find out, I guess we'll find out. I'll find out when I look at the computer you're finding out right now. <laughs> All right, so when it comes to video specs with this camera, you don't get anything fancy. There's no 60 frames per second, no 120 frames per second. You get 4K 30 and that's where you top out, which is fine for me. I shoot in 4K 24 most of the time, so it works perfectly for my needs. And you will be recording in 10-bit and there is also F-Log. Now, here's the crazy thing. If you shoot with an external recorder, like a Ninja V through the HDMI port, you can get 12-bit ProRes RAW. So can you imagine that? You're shooting medium format sensor quality, lots of detail in 12-bit <laughs> ProRes RAW. So that's the one nice thing about this camera. If you want to get that super high-end look with that medium format, shallow depth of field with lots of detail, you can really get some really cool footage with this super cinematic. Although I looked at the footage and you do get that chop. So if you're shooting subjects that are moving or things blowing in the wind, this is probably not the right video camera for you. But if you're shooting talking head stuff like this or just landscapes and stuff like that and your subject matter isn't moving too fast, then this camera definitely could work for you as a video camera. All right, so one week later with the 100S, what are my thoughts? Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I regret it? Is it a waste of money? All right, so let's talk about the camera. So first thing I wanna talk about is image quality. Now, when it comes to image quality, this thing is absolutely amazing. 
You saw the shots in this video, like these are all JPEGs right out of camera. I'm not even editing the RAWs. This is like the detail you get out of a JPEG. And <laughs> that is absolutely nuts. Crop medium format sensor captures so much detail. In my opinion, I, I know, I really love it. After being in the industry for 19 years and shooting full frame most of that, it's nice to finally shoot something with a different perspective. So I'm really enjoying that. And it's kind of like, I want to reshoot everything again and just see what it looks like with this medium format crop or medium format look. And another cool thing I didn't mention earlier is there's a 35 millimeter full frame mode in this camera. So you can set it to full frame mode and it'll crop in on the sensor and you can get that full frame look if you miss that full frame look, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's talk about ease of use. As a Canon shooter coming over and using this camera, is it complicated? Is it hard to figure out how to use it? Well, in essence, all cameras are shutter speed, ISO and aperture. So in that sense, no, it's easy to use. The menu system is not as simplified as Canon. I find Canon menu systems to be the best in the whole industry. This has got a pretty good menu system, but there's also like parts of the menu where it's like an option within it, within an option, within an option. So like subgroup, subgroup, subgroup that you have to go through. And I don't like that. I'd rather have everything just appear where it's supposed to be in a tab instead of like a subgroup. So it's, it's, I don't want to say it's complicated. You can figure it out, but it's not as simple as Canon in terms of the ergonomics and the feel in the hand. It's heavy. It feels like an old DSLR. If you're familiar with the 5d cameras, this is pretty much like a 5d in a Fuji body. And that's what it feels like. This little nub on the back makes it super easy to hold. It's pretty comfortable actually for the weight. It's pretty comfortable. If there was one knock and I didn't mention this in the cons before, but I should have, I didn't think about it is there's only two wheels on this camera. You get a really a rolly wheel here at the front and one at the back where the thumb is. And as a Canon shooter, you have three wheels, at least on the higher end cameras, and one wheels for aperture, one's for shutter speed, one's for ISO. I mean, you do have, you have an aperture ring on the lens, which you can disable or enable, which allows you to you know, do things with the lens. But in terms of like being able to shoot fast and move quick, it's nice to have three dials and these dials are programmable. You can push them in and change function. So I can change my shutter speed here and then I push it in. Now I can change ISO and then aperture at the back. So there's workarounds, but it'd be nice if there was three dedicated dials, one for each important setting. But other than that, ease of use, fantastic. Super easy to use, love taking shots. It's a slow camera, so you're not gonna be blazing through photos. So you take your shot and it's like, and then you can take your next shot. Camera has to process all that information, but yeah, loving it so far. All right, we're just gonna touch on video here. The video quality, amazing, almost too amazing. Like I was looking at the videos that I shot earlier of myself, talking head stuff. You can see all the little bits of dust on my shirt, on my jacket, like it, every little pore. It just sees so much information. You probably wanna use a Pro Mist filter on here to like cut down some of that sharpness. But if you want sharpness and like detail, and if that's what you're capturing, let's say you're doing like museum quality stuff. Let's say some, some I don't know, artifacts and you put it on a little spinning wheel and you just wanna capture all the details. I mean, this would be perfect for that. The only thing is the sensor speed has a slow readout. So if anything is moving too fast, you get that chop as we saw earlier. And that's the unfortunate thing with this camera. So run and gun kind of video, not gonna work. Talking head or still type shots will work. So you're very limited in the terms of scope of work you can do with the video on this camera. Although I wanna experiment and I'm gonna make another video and I want to experiment and just drop that shutter speed. Maybe if I drop it a little more, we'll get a smoother shot. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go do some research because I would love to use this camera as a video camera, but right now it just seems like that chop is a little prohibitive. All right. So let's talk about value for money. Is this camera worth the price? Well, it's, it's a little complicated. Now for me personally, I bought this camera used. I got it on keh.com. I strongly recommend them. I bought the camera. I bought the lens. I bought other equipment off keh and it always arrives just in time. It's well packed. Customer service is great. I'm not associated with them. I'm not sponsored by them. This is just me promoting them because I've had positive experiences with them. So if you want to save some money, I strongly recommend KEH for used equipment. But uh, yeah, if, if, if we look at value for money, can you produce the same quality of shots with full frame? Yes. I mean, if you're shooting like Instagram stuff, social media stuff, even like images that you're going to use for web, you know, promos on web, like, do you need medium format? No. Like once you shrink everything down for like web size or social size, you really can't tell the difference between APS-C and medium format. It makes no difference. It's just 
more or less the experience and medium format is a lot better if you're shooting commercial stuff. So if you're shooting fashion and you want the detail and the textiles and you want to see all the little threads and things like that, medium format is great for that. Commercial product photography, great for that. Landscapes, art, fine art photography. That, that's what where this thing really shines. But in terms of value for money, if we look at this camera, it has the 100 megapixel crop medium format sensor. And if we look at all the other cameras on the market that have this exact same sensor, we can see that this is the most affordable camera out of the bunch. So if we wanna look at value for money in terms of its competition in this sensor range, this is the best value for money camera. If we wanna look at value for money amongst all cameras, including full frame, it's probably a little bit on the expensive side, but uh, it, it depends on what you shoot and if it has value to you. All right, thank you for watching the video all the way to the end, I appreciate it. I know this was a bit of a long one, but I tried to give you all the information I could. So hopefully this video has value to you. Appreciate you watching, subscribe to the channel. There will be more content on the 100S and I'll also like compare it with the R5 and R5 Mark II when that comes out. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And uh, yeah, with that being said, thank you for watching. Peace out, I will see you guys in the next video.